Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of uh, Discover the Art of Peter Adrian's and uh, more specifically, the story behind the painting, which is what we're going to do uh, in a, another episode. You may have seen the first one already where we um, looked at set font and fractals. And now we're going to cover off uh, some uh, uh, paintings that Peter has done on uh, the island of St. Georges. And uh, so we'll go through that. Uh, but before we do, we thought we'd just take um, a couple of seconds here before we get into uh, this uh, this uh, episode and just give you a bit of background for those that didn't see the first uh, first video. Uh, Peter uh, wears many hats. Uh, he's a philosopher, painter, entrepreneur, and in, in his spare time, a, a musician and restaurateur as well. Um, so he keeps quite busy. He and his wife uh, are originally uh, Dutch or from Holland. Uh, moved to the, uh, well, first became acquainted with the Azores about 20 years ago, and then gradually became more acquainted with the island and uh, the, the beauty of the Azores island, in particular St. George, which is actually the, the one of the reasons for having uh, some of his paintings on St. George as a topic. Um, we thought we'd kind of uh, tie all of that in uh, to where they are living now. And uh, during his uh, early uh, years in St. George, came across an abandoned uh, Cheese factory, which is what this was, um, in uh, Sant Antonio on uh, in a Fergusia on St. George Island, and uh, they decided to convert it. And this is where uh, Peter and Rennie uh, set up a, an atelier de casse fabrique, which literally changes into a workshop of uh, the cheese factory, which is uh, um, the English version of it. On the ground floor, he has uh, uh, the workshop where he uses to teach classes and do his own paintings and work as well. And on the top floor, he has a, an, a gallery that uh, he has uh, some of his paintings. He also has his paintings here in, in the restaurant that he, his brother, and his wife have um, resurrected um, on St. George Island in Ursulina. And some of the paintings are there as well. And so uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, St. George landscape. So Peter, thank you very much for agreeing to do yet another episode. I know your time is precious. So uh, mm -hmm. being able to get some of your time is always appreciated. Yeah, well, for, for, and, talk uh, about my so, paintings, I always have time, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay. And I, I should say, as we're doing this, one of the reasons for doing this is to try and capture some of the stories behind the paintings. When I've walked around Peter's um, gallery and he, he provides some color on the paintings that he does, it just brings the whole painting to life and uh, provide so much more color to it. So that was the inspiration by, by trying to do these, uh, the story behind uh, the paintings. And this one in particular, talk about a, a painting coming to life. Maybe Peter, you can talk about where this is and what it is and why we see something coming out of this painting. Well, basically it's a view on the island and uh, uh, you, you're looking east. So you're looking at the west side of the island, which is, uh, a rock formation ends in a rock formation called uh, Rosais. The rock formation goes up, uh, goes, uh, continues uh, under the sea for quite some miles. So it's, it's in a very interesting place also to be with a yacht, although it's quite dangerous. But, um, and uh, I, I saw a picture uh, taken from a tap airplane from this view because this is a kind of, well, we didn't have drones when I when I uh, started to work on this. Um, and immediately my imagination, um, I'm, I'm very always, you know, fascinated by our capacity to see images in other images. And I, the, the, mm -hmm. um, the island is often called the Ilha de Dragao, the island of the dragon. And people also talk about the, the, the island as sleeping dragon. And it was like I saw a, a, a head or or, or, a, or a dragon with that was sleeping, lying in in the uh, in the ocean, with a very large body, and occasionally moving, creating some earthquakes. Uh, but basically, a, a kind of mythical creature that, for the moment, allows us to live on its uh, on its uh, on its back. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I once I when I saw it, everything kind of just connected, right? Saint George and the patron saint of uh, the Saint George of Slate, the dragon, yeah. and um, they've all actually done activities around the whole idea of dragon, dragon island. The trail run is uh, referred to that as well, 
And uh, just a, a little known fact that the head where you have there of the dragon, it's now a, an unstable area and it's now off to off limits to, uh, to visitors. Uh, but uh, interesting fact. So look at another one here. This go, we go from one, the western side of the island to the eastern side of the island. And so maybe you can give us a little bit on, on this one. This is uh, the Leo de Topo. Yeah, so a um, little island of Topo. So you see the, the lighthouse over there. And actually behind there, you see a little island. It's this um, uh, de Topo. There's a sea strait in between. And um, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, a place that I really like uh, a, a lot to be there. And also when I came here as a painter uh, 20 years ago, I was immediately fascinated by the landscape because you have a lot of things that you don't have in uh, in Holland. Um, there is a, a, a the, for instance, the elevation. Holland doesn't have mountains or hills. And also the rocks and the sea. Holland has the sea, but the sea on the Azores is completely different. And uh, so, so I was fascinated by that, fascinated. And I also like to paint uh, on plein air. So basically here I'm, um, I did it, uh, I, I put up my easel and I started just to make sketches and, uh, and uh, um, you know, work on it. So I always start with a little uh, pencil sketch, brush sketch, and then slowly and I fill in the colors. And here you see me, me doing that. And lots of paintings I really like to do out in the open from my van or my bus. And this is one of them. Actually, I gave the painting to Raimundo Leonardes. Uh, he is a friend of mine. He lives in Topo. And he's also a famous builder of Fiora de Terras. And it's hanging in his living room. So, uh, But, you know, I, I like to be on this. Actually, this is the same spot but actually the you have this 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 view on this cape and here we're standing on the cape and um, here is the uh, view also of actually i would say the coast of the village of topo and uh, i was doing this painting and i'm not sure it was the same day or a couple of days late it was quite a large a somewhat larger canvas and i remembered uh, it was very difficult to paint this painting. It started to rain while I was working on that, and actually mm -hmm. that's not not too nice. But well, we we managed to keep the rain off, and then it started to the start to blow. And I I remember that the last half hour I really had to hold the easel and the canvas in order from it to prevent it from being blown away from the Cape. Wow. <laughs> and uh, this, this, is, this is one of the reasons that I really love to paint outside because the paintings are shaped. You don't see the difficulties uh, that, that existed when I was doing the painted, painting, but um, uh, somehow the, um, I would say the, the the problems that you have to survive or to cope with while painting it get into the painting and and you see that I was actually having to, I needed to work rather fast I didn't have time for much details mm -hmm. but I still wanted the painting on finish the painting on spot and actually I like the painting it has a kind of liveliness that uh, was probably created by the bad weather while it was created. Yeah, you can see that coming through in the in the painting. So Rini gets credit for this painting as well, not just you. Rini gets credit for she all my paintings. So there's a... <laughs> <laughs> she, she has an important role in this one. Uh, the Rue La Cerda in uh, in Velas, and um, actually it's made for. I had a cooperation with uh, Caldera Sur from Zaga. Uh, the shop is still in this street, somewhat behind where I painted this this painting. And um, it's, uh, it's a view of the, the Iglesia de Matriz, the church of, uh, of mm -hmm. Velas. And I, I just like to, uh, to, to make these kind of images. Um, it was uh, sold, but it, I, I, I really, so this, this is typically, I, at some point in time, I made for tourists. But I still, I still love this kind of, um, I would say views of uh, uh, Furten, I'm, I, and some other views of the same street. So um, mm -hmm. uh, it's a nice it's a nice impression of 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 the village. 
It's a, a beautiful uh, pedestrian street and a beautiful painting as well. We have another one here you might recognize. Yeah, this one I recognize. This is a... Uh... <laughs> no, here you see what happens if I have time. Because this was this one, I, it took me actually probably several weeks. Not not that I worked permanently on it, no time to finish it. And um, the the amount of so I live in this spot. Actually, the banana trees at the bottom are in my in my um, in my garden. So this is a view I have every day. Actually, if I put open the curtains here, I could see it. And um, yeah, the, the Azores have this. This is where the sun rises in the morning, and on some occasions, especially in summer, you get this gorgeous display of light. On the other side, uh, when I look the other way in the evening, I have this gorgeous and, and amazingly beautiful and spectacular sunsets. Um, but this was actually a, 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 a sunset where I, I really I made a picture of it, and luckily the picture kind of represented the, the, the play of the light, and then I... I kind of had the ambition to, because there's so much things going on in terms of light here, that I, I and I've been experimenting with representing light for the last couple of years a, a lot. So what I wanted to capture is this strange purple or mauve uh, color of the sea. It's uh, basically mm. my, I, I, my 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 theory is that the, any color you can think of. The weirdest color you could think of the sea can have here in under some some weather circumstances. Um, mm -hmm. So here you have this this color that you normally would not associate with the sea, and uh, so basically, if you if you really would look at the painting more in detail, then you would see that even the church here is purple bluish, and also the mm -hmm. house at the left in front has this kind of purple bluish hue mm -hmm. over it because the whole atmosphere is purple bluish. And then you have this uh, strange play of light in uh, in in the in the sky where you already have the the cerulean blue, um, let's say cl clear sky. At the same time, you have this all this play of the whole, uh, let's say, uh, spectrum of light through the the water drops of the of the clouds. And to capture this is something that really fascinates me. And then you have next to the church and the, and the buildings at the horizon you have this where the sun is almost visible this hellish yellow light which really shines and uh, i'll talk about it in painting of the brain but actually um black and uh, and yellow are very close to each other in in, in our eyes because in to order to mm. make yellow you have to activate all uh, three sensors in the eye, the eye doesn't have a sense of a yellow, so you have to to, to activate the red, green, and the blue. And uh, so, putting hellish red, yellow, and dark, dark, black against each other works really well in the painting. So there was another thing I was uh, was interested in, and um, yeah, the painting looks stunning. I already had some people asking to. Uh, to buy it, but I want to actually uh, keep it. Keep it. Uh, we, we're going to organize some expositions, and this one is going to be in there. Uh, I'll see where it goes. Um, but um, yeah, this is this this is an overview of some of the landscapes I did. I did zillions of landscapes on the Azores, but um, yeah. and I'm going to continue doing it. Uh, wherever you look here on the islands, you see a painting. So I, I yeah, you yeah. know that I still have a lot to do. This this one in particular, I've seen many different views and approaches, and there's one in painting for the brain, which is kind of with fractals as well, so a different way of uh -huh. looking at it. And uh, also another familiar spot, hard to get to, must admit, in Fajan de Jalmes. So you can drive down to the edge, and then there's a bit of an area to walk. Can you give us a little bit of insight on this one? Okay, so uh, uh, um, you know the the thematic reason why I painted this is the, the road was just finished. I think it's about seventeen years ago or something like that. Oh, wow. And the architect of the road was my friend Lino Fonseca, and he told me, "I'm really proud of this road, and if you know if I contributed anything to the island, it was creating this road." So that was a that was a, a reason to to make the painting. And actually, it, yeah, it's in his possession. The, the painting is in his room hanging in his living oh, room very nice the, the, 
the, the technical uh, issue that's at stake here is um, you might see that it completely consists of very broad brush strokes. Uh, and I, I bought a set of really broad brushes, some, sometimes this, this, this wide. And I thought it was like, was nice. And they were very thin, but broad, like a, actually they, they, they probably used, you have to use them to varnish paintings or something like that. I thought it was <laughs> fun to paint with those, with those brushes. So I, I, I did what this one is style. Um, I didn't do too many in this style, but, but, um, you know, I liked it and, and, uh, yeah, that it is, it is what it is. Here is the, here's the, here's the image of Fasha de Zalmas. It's mm -hmm. a great place. It's a, a great place to swim in the summer. There's a little restaurant and, uh, I still love to go there. Yeah. The painting is also in my, uh, in my, uh, it used in my comic book, uh, Juan Cagaro and the, um, the secret of Santa Barbara. I, I use it in, as a background in some of the images. So very nice. I was just going to say it's an area that beautiful to visit and and get to as well. But probably a, a little known site that pe probably not many tourists uh, deviate from the main road to go down and, and explore. But certainly one that people should consider. Here's another one that's uh, quite interesting, and it's just uh, in in Urslina as well, Portingush. Yeah, yeah. I exactly know when this painting was made because it was the twenty first of October, uh, 1920, uh, 2021. and uh, because it it was the day that Rini and I were married for forty years, and so I said I have a bus and I have painting gear in my bus, so it's, oh, I'm gonna have a, a day off and we're gonna have a a bit of a picnic and I'm gonna do a painting and uh, so so uh, you know she was actually taking a bit of doing a bit of sunbathing and reading probably and i was uh, i was putting up my easel and uh, yeah here's the same thing i i love this kind of um playing of light uh, uh on the rocks that are wet uh i also this has the charm of of being outside so i didn't have a lot of time i had to finish the painting quite mm. quite rapidly which which makes you take a lot of decisions, and actually, these 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 plein air paintings have a charm and and a, a freshness over them that is that is, yeah. Whenever I go to my studio, I have time to think about things, and um, you get completely different paintings. I'm not saying that they're necessarily mm. better or worse, but it it's something different. So I love to do this. Actually, with all the business growing at this moment here in South Jures. I feel I do not have time enough to do it, but uh, this one is something that uh, some and I'll never sell this one because it, you know, we have the it, it's remembering sure. our uh, our wedding anniversary. Your anniversary, it's a, uh, an important milestone. So this one you did yeah. in the space of an afternoon or a, a day. Is that what? No, this, this, this. Uh, so, uh, so basically, if you do these kind of paintings, so first of all, I always. I always have have brought myself into situations. For instance, I was when I was starting to sketch in the family. I always sketch during parties, and basically, yeah. people only have a certain pose for a very limited time. So you have to be work very fast. And same, I think two three hours, and then you've had it. Wow! Wow! And uh, here's another iconic spot, another one, uh, you know, a little further east on the island, uh, another mm -hmm. well-known Fajan that many people hike to. It's uh, Fajan de saint Juan. Yeah, yeah. This was also, uh, basically, Rini is sitting in front in the plastic chair. And oh. uh, Joanna, a friend of uh, ours, is, is doing a watercolor of the same spot at the same time. So, uh, Joanne and I also, we often do co-productions where I do a drawing and she does the coloring of the drawing. And, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it's an iconic spot and we were having a drink and I thought I'd put up my muscle and uh, make a little sketch. Um, I think this one I partly finished in my studio because it's quite elaborate. But sure. the, the, basic sketch, the, the basic sketch was done uh, uh, on site. Uh, yeah, I, I remember my wife and I, when we finished a hike, we we had a picnic just out in front of the, 
the little church and chapel that's there. It's uh, quite a beautiful uh, area on the island. It's one of the most then, beautiful fajans, and it, it's quite accessible. So that's that's, uh, yes. that's also an advantage. You you can drive down. You can also hike from Luraj down, which is what yeah. we had done. And we finish off uh, today with one of the more iconic uh, sites on Saint George. It's a view as you're coming down from the Serre du Tour, and there's a lookout here, uh, just uh, above, uh, looking down to uh, Fajan de Caldera sur Saint Christ. Uh, what can you tell us about yeah. this one? Well, this was an assignment, actually, because uh, we have Caldera Surf Shop and Zeka, the owner, asked me. He wanted to have a, a coffee mug with this image on it. So I uh, I used watercolor as a medium, but this is a, a composed image. Actually, I, I took I asked Winnie to take a picture of myself with a rucksack and a, 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 a stick, a walking stick. And I'm not sure who the other person was. I'm not, but somebody posed for that. And um, but uh, yeah, I like I like the the watercolor a lot. And actually, I think they still sell the mugs with this image on on it in mm -hmm. uh, in Caldera Surf. Although uh, some of the rendering that they did in the factory that produces reproduces the images is uh, well. I don't like it really, to say the least. But um, you can see that it's fitted to this picture. And of course, the, the view is iconic. So mm -hmm. I'm glad I've, I've made it. And uh, it's, these, these are the things. It's actually a, more of a marketing image than a, a, a real work of art. But I still, I still like the painting because it, it, it's such an iconic spot to, uh, to have an image mm -hmm. of. Yeah, many uh, many of the tourism brochures, just Azores tourism generally, often use this this view of the Caldera on many of their promotional materials as well. And uh, I I actually do after you mentioned it, uh, I was trying to remember where I had seen this image before. And now that you mentioned the coffee cup that gets used on coffee cups, and and just to connect the dots, the 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 uh, Caldera surface shop is in that first painting in Village that we saw. Well, not the first painting, but one of the first paintings. In Valage on that main street of Francisco Lacerda. So uh, that's where yeah. the Caldera Surf Shop is. So, and actually, that brings us to the end. So, that was um, an overview of some of the landscape uh, paintings that you uh, you have of Saint Georges. Uh, there are many others as well. And so, we've got uh, the website there to the gallery if people are interested in, in looking to see some of your, your paintings. So, uh, we hope you enjoyed uh, this episode and uh, stay tuned for some more. We have a couple coming up that will go. Um, some on St. George, but some also outside of St. George, so stay tuned for those.